Welcome to our third hour of our, pres our resurrection prayer rotation. Um, I'm excited about what God is already doing. Uh, anybody that know Pastor Bennett will know how serious I am about prayer um, and how serious I am how serious I am about prayer and how serious I am about getting through to God. Uh, the Lord just put this on our heart uh, to do this prayer and to have a resurrection prayer rotation. I've asked brothers and sisters, sons and daughters that I know love the power of prayer and believe in the power of prayer. These are not people that pray religiously. These are people that pray earnestly, expecting results. We've asked you to submit your names and thank you for submitting family member names. We've got these names and we've got these names on the altar and we're praying over these names. This is what we're gonna do from now until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. We're believing God for resurrection power. So today in this hour, I've got my son in the gospel, a very, very dear son. His name is Elder Dexter, Minister Dexter. Um, uh, he's one of the few young men in ministry that walk in such levels of integrity and sincerity in the word of God and loves, loves the power of prayer. So I've asked him to come. He's going to share. We were already blessed by Pastor Hannah and how God used him and took him up in travail for the people, understanding the power of the intercessor. And so I've asked these men and women of God to be free, to do whatever the Lord gives them to do, but we will close it with prayer. So with that being said, I'm going to let my son, uh, Minister Dexter, please, allow the Lord use you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Pastor, for calling us together, for summoning us to the place of prayer. I don't think there's anything more important happening in the entire world than what we're doing right now. Trouble has a way of pushing us into the purpose and the intent that God created us. And I believe that God has given Pastor Bennett uh, to the nations for such a time as this, that he has raised her up, uh, raised her up on platforms, not, on, not only there, but also on social media, so that the impact of her intercession, the weight of it, can penetrate in the spirit world all over the world. And so we are in a very critical time, uh, people of God, where God is giving us answers. And people are troubled, people are not clear about what is happening with uh, the things that our world is going through. There's not only pandemic, there are floods, there are fires, there are earthquakes, there is pestilence, uh, there are locusts eating up the crops in Africa. All of the things that God forewarns us of in scripture are beginning to manifest and there are questions. Are we in judgment? Is this the end? Is this God? Is this the devil? Are we in trouble? Are we being judged? And I felt the Lord leading me earlier today to bring some clarity to that before we pray so that we do not pray amiss and so that we have a handle on the promises of God and how to invoke those promises for answers. Uh, Pastor Hannah in the previous watch of prayer hit on two things uh, that the Lord had been dealing with me about over the last couple of days. The first being strength, uh, that the intercessors need strength. The Bible declares in Hosea 6, distinctly speaking of judgment, that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So information literally can strengthen us so that we are praying what God is wanting to hear and what is required in the realm of the spirit to penetrate heaven and get us the answers that we need. Secondly, Pastor Hannah spoke of a passage that I've been wrestling with uh, this week, 1 Chronicles 21 which we'll address in a moment. But firstly, let's just talk a little bit about where we are, and then we're going to uh, take off and, and really get some traction, I believe, in the place of intercession. We are at the end of the dispensation of grace. And you may say, what is that? That is the end of the church age as we know it. There have been over 2,000 years of church power in the earth, and we have weathered all kinds of stor storms in the sentence of God. Every one of you listening to this today, this evening, wherever you are listening, you are a word from God. You were created out of the breath of God. He breathed and he spoke a word and you came into being. And then when you came into the earth realm, when God sent you here, he put an assignment in you that the word that he called you to be, what you were formed and fashioned to be by the mind and the will of God, you were then placed into the sentence of God. 
Every word helps to combine the sentence and build what God is speaking. And in this era, we have to be tapped in to what God is speaking to us and through us because every one of us has a part to play in what God is building. And so we are at the end of that dispensation. We sit at the end of an age. What is happening, uh, there are things from the end time, even those things that will happen in the tribulation, they're trying to penetrate into what is the end of the church age because when you clash ages, you have an overlap. There's a connection that is happening. And so we find ourselves in between here and there. We are not quite there yet, and we are not where we used to be, but God is taking us someplace, and the devil really wants to thwart this end time move of God. He does not want the souls to come into the kingdom. Last night, we were on a prayer line, and the Lord had us beginning to travail for souls, and he asked us, he said, have you forgotten what it's all about? That the only reason that I even sent you here was to choose me. The only reason I even gave you time and chance, it happens to us all, the book of Ecclesiastes said. He said, the only reason was that you would choose me. And while you're down there, I would give you business with me to beckon others to come back as well. And so we understand that we believe in a catching away. We believe in a raptured church that according to 1 Thessalonians 4, those of us that remain living until the coming of the Lord will be caught up to meet him in the air if we live right. And at the end of an age, you begin to have this wrestling. And the Lord spoke to me last night and said, the, the Lord whispers, I whisper in warnings, but I shout in judgments. Mm. I whisper to you all along the way, go this way, go that way, make this adjustment, make this turn. But when you don't hear me, I begin to shout. And the sons and the daughters of God have already heard the warnings. They've already heard the summonsings. And I can, uh, we were just talking, Pastor and I, before we got on, uh, that over the last six months, really the last year, the Lord had been readying different things in our lives, preparing us for this transition. We didn't know exactly what was coming, but many of the prophets, he doesn't do anything in the earth unless he reveal it to the prophets. And so he's revealing his will and preparing us to walk in the truth that when these things come, he can pass over. And so 1 Peter 4 and 17 declares that the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Yeah. Now, if the righteous, if the righteous scarcely are saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let us those who suffer according to the will of God commit our souls to the Lord in doing good as to a faithful creator. We see here that the judgment begins with us, that there have been major hits that we are suffering against the body of Christ. And I'm not here declaring that God is judging and that people that have passed are in sin. No, that's not at all what we're saying at all. We are saying that the judgment in the earth that has touched the entire globe is addressing the church universal. It is addressing the nation's universal. And the time has come that the bowls in heaven, just as the incense of prayers fills those bowls, there are judgment bowls that the iniquity of the people fills up. And it comes to a place where the Lord's wrath is poured out. Not that he desired it to be so, but that it is the legal realm and the way that the spirit world works. We have to understand that there are a number of judgments that we are experiencing through this that are affecting us. Almost every person on the planet is being affected health-wise, precautionary-wise, or in their finances. And so we have seen, we have to take notice of the signs. The largest single transfer of wealth from the United States government or any government to date in human history, we've never seen anything of the likes of what is being rolled out. There is a wealth transfer for some of those that are aligned for it. There is a divine wealth transfer coming that you would have time and space. Uh, and it, it, it deals with so many principles. We don't have time to get into that. But we are seeing death tolls at an alarming rate that is assigned to us. Records breaking of things that have never happened before in nature. Records happening uh, in, 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 in different, different uh, natural episodes that are going on. Earthquakes and hurricanes and parts of the world that usually don't happen in those seasons. That is the Lord shouting out to us. 
return unto me. And so these signs are beckoning us into the will of God so that we would, as intercessors, be able to pray effectively, not just praying, Lord, make it stop, but Lord, let your will be done. Yes. They are signs to us. Psalms 115 and 16, this is where we understand our authority and how we are going to begin to move this thing. He declares the heavens, yea, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth have I given unto the children of men. When we give Satan legal access in the earth that God gave us to rule by our lifestyle, by our choices, by our vote, by our actions, then we cannot thwart when judgment is released because legally those things have gone into motion. There is a devil that wants the soul of America. He wants the soul of the nations of the earth. And so he pushes an agenda that he would then dare to even have the church agree to so that we would be locked out of our authority. But he gave us an answer. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves, pray, turn from their wicked ways, seek my face, I would hear from heaven, forgive the sin, and heal the land. So we have a way of escape. We're going to look at one more verse of scripture, and then we're going to begin to pray. Hallelujah. First Chronicles 21, uh, we talked about this uh, just earlier, and then Pastor Hannah also hit on it as well. But we understand here that David is a type of the church. He's a type of church leadership, if you will. And his eyes were on his ability and the ability of what he had established, what he wanted to make sure that would be continuing in the earth as a success. And this is a reliance of the arm of the flesh. Because prophetically, we see here significantly, this is 2020, a census year. So the Lord is shouting to us in that, that we are in a year where we are being counted. Prophetically, this is significant because we find ourselves in the same pattern that David was counting amongst ourselves. God, he is a good father. He is merciful. He will that none would perish. And he waits and warns and gives gives us much time to repent and to turn from our wicked ways. But when things expire, those bowls are released. And God is saying that my church has been acting more like the world than the kingdom, that they've been after algorithms and likes and success and numbers. It's taken the priority over my presence. And even here, we have seen in the pandemic that some, as they're leading flocks, they're leading by folly and foolishness. They're not actually summonsing men's souls to come in and to draw in to grab a wailing and a fasting before the Lord. That is not where we need to be, people of God. We really need to make this turn and this adjustment that we would embrace the inconveniences that it sometimes takes to get the presence on our lives again. That we would be more in love with the presence than the blessings of the Lord. God doesn't take issue with our blessings, our excellence, our presentation, our success. It's about our motive. Where did we put our trust? Some trust in princes, some trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. And we are here to declare today that, Lord, our trust is in you. We repent and we turn back. We put our focus back on you. We say, let not our will, but thy will will be done. Father, in the name of Jesus, we take a hold to the horns of the altar right now. And we thank you for the mercy that has been applied. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The blood of the Lord Jesus is against you. We take this opportunity right now to plead the blood. Father, as you passed over the children of Israel, all of them were not perfect. All of them were not all the way right. But you said, when I see the blood, I will pass over. And so God, today, we're asking you to see the blood. We plead the blood over every family, over every household of faith, over every household that has someone in it that names you. Lord, if you could only find 10 righteous, we declare, Lord, that you would save the city. And so, Father, I'm asking you to see cities today. See the body of Christ. See the cities of our God. See, Lord, those cities set upon a hill that cannot be hid. Father, we're asking that you would cause the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ to be shine within us 
that we would be vessels and vehicles of the glory of God. I pray and plead the blood over every nurse, over every ministry technician, over every chaplain. Father, we plead the blood over every doctor, over every physician's assistant, and we declare that the power of Almighty God shroud them like a garment, that the angels of the Lord are encamped around them, about them, and that as it was in John G. Lake's day, let the virus die in their hands. We decree and declare that as they lay hands on patients, that the demonic realm is being backed up, that the angels of the Lord are charging those atmospheres with the light of God, and we know by science that light destroys virus. And we declare that the light of Almighty God is burning out the virus. It's burning out infection. It's burning out impurity, for this is a foul impurity and a stench in the nostrils of God, and we declare that it is being purified by the light of God. Father, we come into a revelation of the light that you are to be. Salt and light. And so, God, we declare that we are the salt that preserves. We are the light that purifies. And we come up into that purification right now in the name of Jesus. Father, give us the revelation, the hidden revelation of this time. Lord, that you have caused us to shut in in secret places. You have caused us to shut in in our houses and in our churches. And you have left us there on the altar of God. And, Father, we are laying before you today, saying we cry aloud and we spare not not until you have mercy. Father, we're asking as you spoke out over David that day and you said enough is enough as the prophets have already been praying today. We ask that you would shout all over us enough now in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood and we declare over the church that she is triumphant, that she is healed, that she is rising, that she is saved, delivered and set free. May the power of God be released in the church like never before. May we lay hands on the sick and see them recover. I pray that even the power in our garments, there would be power in there again. Father, we're asking that you would even give strength unto the lay member, that one that doesn't think they have power. I pray you would charge them again. Give them a charge in the Holy Ghost that they would know their authority. They would know their assignment. They would know their power and work thereof. Father, I thank you that you've given us time to work while it is day. Lord, let our focus not be so much on preserving this life that we forget that there is another life that is laid up for us. Oh God, we're asking that you would give us a revelation of the burden of the eternal realm, that we would think more on things above than on things beneath. And God, we ask you that you would give us a revelation of the man Jesus, that we would see his face and we would be troubled in our souls. What must I do to be saved? God, convert us again. Make us the church of power. Make us a church that embraces power. Make us a church that puts it down and tells you yes. God, we want it in our belly. God, we gotta have it in our soul. We gotta be saved. We gotta be delivered. We gotta be set free. And God, when the church is delivered, use us to set the nations afire. Use this great trouble as a great turbulence and a great ebolo and a great thrusting back into the kingdoms of this world that they will behold the power of God and become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. We decree and declare that nations are turning back to God as the testimony of Jesus, the spirit of prophecy is beginning to move in the earth as the prophecies are being fulfilled. You are filling up the bowls and even as this iniquity has filled up and been poured out in pestilence, we decree and declare that the anointing that destroys your tongue in your shine. Yes, Lord, that the anointing that brings revival is being poured out. We decree and declare that the glory of the Lord is coming for a mighty outpouring. It's coming for a mighty demonstration. And we will see the glory of our God. We will see it in our lifetime. Oh, yes. 
Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We will see the glory of God. He said, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou should see the glory of God. And we thank you, Lord, according to your word. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Every person that has been snatched from this realm to the judgment and to their final destiny, we decree and declare their lives are not in vain, but they will be a fragrance before you. And God, you will honor the blood. You will honor the life. You will redeem the time. We declare that sons and daughters are coming back, that you're saving our souls, that you're purifying us in ways that we couldn't get had you not touched us. And so, Father, we thank you for the lip. We thank you for the hollow in our thigh. And we thank you for a yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen and amen. Hallelujah to God. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God. Oh God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh. Mm. Yes, Lord. Oh. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. We honor you, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. I praise God for you, man of God. I praise God for your sound word and instruction in the scripture. Oh, I feel his anointing. I feel his anointing. Oh, Jesus, submit our soul to you. Ooh, we submit our soul. Get up, Shandaba. We submit our soul to your will. Get up, Shandaba. Get up, Shandaba. Jesus. We submit our soul to your will. Okay, oh, Jesus. 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 Oh, Jesus. 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 Honor the Lord. Thank God for you. And Thank God for the anointing that's on your life. Praise God for every brother and sister, and son and daughter that participated in this hour. Meet us again the next hour. We've got, I believe it's Shalandria Taylor. These are young warriors that God is raising up that will be a voice unto their generation. Fall fresh. It's anointing that's coming. I feel the weight of the anointing. I feel his presence, the anointing of the Lord. Be back with this, this resurrection prayer rotation. We'll be back at three o'clock uh, Pacific time. I believe it's my dear sister and friend, Shalandria Taylor. Um, we have Cece Winings coming up. We have Tiffany Mariah coming up. We have Bishop Dillard coming up. These are men and women of God that believe in getting in the presence of God. So thank you again, son. I'll be praying with you. Um, you know, we'll be in connection. Um, I'm at the church now and I'm planning to stay here for the rest of the day. Um, me and about eight other people only. Um, and just being able to be in the presence of the Lord. May you go with God today, saints. May you be blessed. In Jesus name. God bless you.